All right, so we're starting this Monday edition of the Sports Max Zone. We're going to be talking football and the Jamaica Premier League type. So the Jamaica Premier League is half is at its halfway point. Still teams that competed in the CONCACAF Caribbean Cup are playing catch-up with Cavalier and Harbourview playing the first of their two rescheduled games on Sunday. Harbourview left it late to defeat Treasure Beach 2-0 through stoppage time goals from Deshaun Anglin and Shaquille Bradford. Meanwhile, the featured game on Sports Max saw Cavalier dismantle 10-man Annette Gardens 3-0 with Kyle Ming a returning Dwayne Atkinson and Chanel Thomas getting the goals. Arnett Gardens head coach Xavier Gilbert said a lack of wit contributed to his team's loss. We were very flat. Um, I didn't think we provided the wit that we, we, we should have provided to enable our midfielders um, to break down the Cavalier team. I think we were too narrow in term, um, when we, 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 were, we were in possession of the ball. Um, and they, they hit us in transition a couple of times. Um, and things just didn't go according to how we plan or discuss what we were going to do, you know. We just didn't execute um, and we have to give credit to, to, to Cavalier for the way they, they executed their game. What Cavalier Technical Director Rudolf Speed lauded his team's unpredictability. Well, yeah, um, it's something that we're working on, so it's more difficult for you to pinpoint where the goal is coming from. And that is a good thing from our point of view. But remember, you know, we had it hard early in the season. We're just getting back some of the players and the commitment, and um, I think that is what is, is bringing us through now. All right, it's a pleasure, Leger, to have you in studio with us, our football analyst. Um, we're going to start now by talking about that loss for Annette Gardens, because did you see that one coming and by that margin of goals? Well, I mean, I haven't been here for quite some time, but lest we forget, I'm still a prediction guru, and I had to make the prediction without people hearing, but I did see that loss coming. Um, I think Cavalier have been really impressive, I think, this season, especially the last couple of weeks. Their defence have really has really started to improve. You know, a lot of clean sheets on the bounce now. And Arnett Gardens, I, I don't think that they've quite found their feet as yet on a new management. They lost a lot of players, so the refresh rate in the squad is quite high. They've gained, yes, Fabian Reed who has come back into the team and for the past two games has performed admirably. But I still think with a very young midfield, Jaim Thomas, I, I know a lot of the, it's a practically a completely new midfield than what they started last season with. So I still think that there are some growing pains for them to work out, especially with how Xavier Gilbert coaches. You know, he wants his, a lot of associative play, he wants his players to, you know, really be around each other and really figure things out on the field. And when you come against a, a team that's really well drilled like Cavalier were, they were always going to struggle and that's exactly what happened yesterday. Leger, you know I'm always rooting for you and always on your team, but here's a bit of advice, right? Whenever you're doing predictions and getting them right, you have to do them on the show. You can't, you said you were not on the show and you made that prediction and it was right and nobody heard you. No, and that's it? unfortunate because when you do make them, they're wrong on air. You know, I, I think maybe Ricardo realized that I was going to have go through a purple patch of predictions, so he scheduled me to be off for a couple of weeks. But, you know, I'm back now, and, and I won't, won't let that happen again. All right, good on you. Do you think, Annette, though, they've been feeling the effects of losing Kimani Osborne? I saw that as a headline in one of the Jamaican newspapers. Yeah, that, that's a possibility as well. As I mentioned, that they don't have a lot of continuity from last season. He's someone who was there. He didn't start week in, week out, but I do think that you know, he, he's a talented player. He started this season really full of confidence. And yeah, he, he could have added something, especially down the flanks where they started Warner Brown, who is usually an out and out striker, to really partner um, Fabian Reed. And you saw Xavier Gilbert speak about their lack of width. I think that came especially down the right hand side because they didn't have that out and out winger, but they did have wingers on the bench. So I'm assuming that was on purpose. Maybe the width was supposed to come from the wing back. but. You know, he was pinned back by Dwayne Atkinson on the left-hand side for Cavalier. So a lot of tactical tweaks didn't go the way that Arne Gardens would have wanted it to go. And Cavalier, on the other hand, I think they were really good. Yeah. Two quick questions here for you, Lij, because we know that Rudolf Speed is a student of the game and he, he studies and strategizes expertly when he comes up against his opponents. Um, Dwayne Atkinson is back for him, so it boosts his attacking options, but his leading scorer, the Antiguan Jalmaro Calvin, scored in three consecutive games and was benched for yesterday's match. And it 
is to Cavalier's credit and Speed's credit that he was able to get such an emphatic win with um, with his team roster that he, he he put out, taking his his main goal scorer up to this point off the starting roster. Yeah, that, that's very true. But if you listen to Rudolph Speed at any point in time, you know, throughout these past years when he's been in the league, he's always made mention that he thinks that his system is over any player. So if he were to swap and change, and you know, he's proven to be right, to be honest, because since Cavalier have been in the league in, since 2017, 2018, they have been in the semi-final every single year. That's really astonishing consistency. And we see the amount of turnover they have. They've done it with a really young team. So every year there's always new players really stepping up. They've lost um, Colin Anderson this season. We see Jalmara Calvin stepping up and scoring goals. And they have other players coming in now. And then I mentioned last season when they were going into the running, how them losing doing Atkinson would have impacted them negatively. They went really far. They still went to the final of both the Link Cup and the Jamaica Premier League. But at the same time, I said when you come against the very best of teams like Mount Pleasant were last season, there's something that Dwayne Atkinson brings to this Cavalier team and to the Jamaica Premier League that they can't just replace with one player. And he showed that again, getting a goal and an assist against Arnett Gardens. And I think he was really good in his performances. You know, he still looks really bright. And he has the finishing, he has the movement, he has the pace, he has the creativity. And I think on his day, when he's playing consistently, there is no doubt that he's one of the best players in this league. Yeah, and I want to make emphasize the point that for a few seasons now, we have said in our coverage of, of Premier League football that Dwayne Atkinson has the potential to be an international quality player. He was briefly on loan in Iceland. Didn't work out that well for him, so he's now back here. How how much quality would you would you say Dwayne Atkinson has? I think he has really an immeasurable type of quality because there, there are certain things that you have to be on the lookout for. You know, we saw him in, in his youth days at Kingston College. He was a very good player, playing alongside Trayvon Reed, you know, other quality players. But when you, you have to think about when you see a player at a young age, if they can translate what they're doing then into the senior game. Yes, you have players that are faster than players when you're playing under unders football, but then when you get to, are you still going to be faster than these grown men? He does have that. Can he still take on grown men at will? He does have that. Can he still, his ball striking, is he still going to be able to replicate that? He can do that. And that leads him to be also a goal threat and also really important for Cavalier creativity-wise. So I think that he can go at a very far level if he continues to keep this consistency. It's just whether or not he's going to get those opportunities because he's still very young as well. Yeah, um, let's quickly move to Harbourview because I'm not sure what's going wrong with Ludlow Bernard's side. Only their second win yesterday for the season. And at 90 minutes, it was nil all against Treasure Beach. They got two stoppage time goals to get the win. Happy for them that they got the win, but real problems for Ludlow Bernard and his Harbourview side. Yeah, and I think in, in my lifetime, uh, I can't quite say it's been a short lifetime so far because I'm getting up there in age now, but... Uh, in my lifetime, uh, this is the first time I've seen a lot of Bernard team struggle this much. You know, they've had a lot of turnover as well, but I think with their turnover, they've replaced the quality with good players. You know, you see them there in 11th place. You know, the, the last, um, say for instance, we're not seeing Demar Rose for them anymore, but they replaced him with Ajuma Johnson, one of the best number 10s on the island. And then, you know, they, they needed a striker. They ended up getting Shaquille Bradford, who has been playing really well, I think six or seven league goals now. So it's not that they're not replacing their quality with more quality or at least an equal level of quality, but it's just not gelling for them. I don't yeah. see it, especially in the midfield. They have Jashan Aglin and Kasim Priestley. That's as formidable a midfield pair as we're likely to see in this league, but it's just not clicking for them offensively, defensively. In the middle third, it's not as smooth. But if there's any coach in Jamaica who has the experience and the quality to really get this team clicking, especially towards the end of the season, we know it's Ludlow Bernard. But with the quality of teams ahead of him, I'm not quite sure if that experience and quality he has a, as a coach is going to get them into this top six this time. Yeah, I'm not quite sure myself. But by the way, DJ, welcome back to yeah. work. Um, <laughs> and I hope you enjoyed your vacation, your time off that you requested um, some time ago. Um, it's a pleasure to have you back, by the way. It, 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 it's a pleasure to be here with you as well, Ricardo. Making up predictions and when he does <laughs> say them for the public, they are wrong. Right, Lance and Mariah? Yeah, let's take a break for that because...
After that from Ricardo, that comeback, we need to take a water break. We'll be back. <laughs> 